we'll start with number three here. We're told that the probability of A is 0.4, and the probability that B will happen is 0.6. And we want to know the probability of A and B. Now remember from the intro video, this really we should be saying instead of and, we should be saying then. Um, and I make sure to keep making that distinction because I, I think it's unfortunate that the, the word and is used in two different contexts. In 10.4 it means that A and B are part of the same event. Um, meaning that if A was king and B was heart, it would mean that we got a king and a heart, meaning the king of hearts. But in 10.5 now, A and B happen one right after the other. They happen in sequence. So this would mean that we get a king as, a, as one card. Then we get a heart as the second card. Notice in 10.4 it would mean that we had one card that was the king of hearts. In 10.5 it means that we have two cards, one being a king and one being a heart completely different. Um, so just keep that in mind. When we see and in 10.5, think then, because it, it's one thing after the other. One thing happens then another. Okay, so um, A will happen 40% of the time. Right, so in point 0.4 is like right here-ish. Okay, so 40% of the time A will happen. Okay. Now, after A has happened, we want B to happen, and B happens 60% of the time. And 60% is somewhere right here. Okay, so A happens here, then B happens here. And this little piece right there is where A happens, then B happens. Okay? So then we just... We want to know what 60% of 40% is. So 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, 0 0.24. That is it. Um, now we'll do number five. We're told that the probability of A is 0.25. We don't know the probability of B. We want to know, well, the probability of A, then B. Notice I'm saying then, but writing and. Uh, A, then B is 0.2. So we want to find the probability of B. Remember that the probability of A, then B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So if we want to find the probability of B, we're just going to divide the probability of A on both sides. And that'll isolate the probability of B. So we will uh, take the probability of A and B, divide it by the probability of A, and that'll leave us with the probability of B. So let's grab the calculator. 0.2 divided by 0 0.25 that's 0.8 okay just a little bit of algebra there just some isolation all right next we'll go on to number 9 So there is a spinner um, that you can see there on your your pages there by number nine. Um, we're going to spin it twice, and we want to know the probability that we get uh, in number nine a green. Then see how they use then blue uh, rather than and. So let's see. We just count the spaces there's 16 so how many of them are green there's four of them are green so the probability of green then blue 
probability of green times the probability of blue. So the probability of green, there's 4 out of the 16 that are green. And we'll multiply it by the probability of blue. There's 3 that are blue. It would be a little simpler if we simplify this a little bit here. So we get 1 times 3 over 16 times 4. 3 out of 64. Um, now we'll do number 14. Now you want to know the probability of green, then red, then yellow. Okay, well, we just, from the last one, we know that green happens one fourth of the time. So this would be about a half, so about a fourth. So, a fourth of the time we get green. Okay, so first we're going to get green, then we want to get red. So one fourth of the time we'll get green and we'll go on to try and get red and that'll happen five sixteenths of the time, so a little bit more than a quarter of the time. We'll go on to get red as well. Okay, so there's where we get green, then we get red, then we're gonna go on to get yellow, and yellow, there's four yellows. So one fourth of this time. So really, really tiny. Just this tiny little sliver here. This would be where we get green, then red, then yellow. So you could just keep going. Whether there's two events or three events, four events, we could just keep multiplying the probabilities together because we want to have <coughs> uh, four sixteenths of, um, of five sixteenths of four sixteenths. If this is four sixteenths here, and then we wanted to get uh, five sixteenths of that, and we wanted to get four sixteenths of that, and that's what we're looking for. So you just multiply it all together. So 4 sixteenths is just 1 fourth times 5 sixteenths times another 4 sixteenths. So you get 5 over uh, 4 times 16 times 4, which is 256. So 5 out of 256 times we will get green, then red, then yellow. Right now. 16. So the probability of A is 0.3. And remember what this is saying is the probability of B given A is 0.6. And the probability of A then B is what we want to find out. So this happens when we have um, dependent events. Um, what we're saying here is, what's the probability that B happens given that A happens? Um, meaning that A has some effect on B. A and B uh, can affect each other. If A happens, then it can change the probability of B um, as, as a, a single event. Uh, but they've already taken that into account. The probability that B will happen, given that A has already happened, is 0.6. So we just multiply these two together. Okay, so 0.3 times 0 0.6, 0 0.18. All right, so 0 0.18 is the probability <coughs> that A will happen and then B will happen. is 0.8 and the probability of B given A is unknown the probability of A then B is 0.4 right, so the same idea here the probability of A and B uh, A then B is equal to the probability of A times the probability B given A. So if we want the probability of B given A, we're just going to divide by the probability of A. It's going to cancel on both sides, <coughs> or in the numerator and denominator. So the probability of A and B is 0.4 divided by the probability of A, that's 0.8. So 0.5 is the probability that uh, B will happen given that A has already happened.
Um, oh, you know what? I have written down 0.4 instead of 0.32. That's what that should have been. 0.32. So 0.4. on to number 22. So 22 is just one that it's, it's actually kind of weird and confusing because um, it uses this word given. So it, it would imply that we are um, we're talking about this dependent probability and, and we kind of are. But what 22 is saying is what's the probability that we're going to pick a number from 1 to 20? What's the probability that that the number that we pick is 2, given that it's even. Now, the, the difference between this and um, the probabilities we've discussed before is that what's the probability that this number is going to be 2, given that, and they just tell you something else about this same number. The reason that's different is because what we would normally say is like the probability of getting a heart given that we already picked a first card, like we're, pro we're talking about a second card here, what's the probability that we get a heart given that uh, the first card was a king or something like that? This one's saying, what's the probability we get a two given that the number that we're looking at is even, right? We're talking about one number. Here we're talking about two. So it's, it's kind of a, a strange problem. But here it is nonetheless, and we're going to talk about it. So given that it's even, what's the probability that it's a 2? Well, it's like we, we know this one thing about it, but we, we don't know anything else. So given that it's even, we can eliminate everything that's not even and then see what's the probability of a 2 now that we know it's even. Um, and if it's a number from 1 to 20, 10 of those numbers are even, um, 2, 4, 6, and so on, all the way to 20. So... Uh, what's the probability that it's a 2? Well, one of those numbers is 2 out of the 10 that are even, so 1 out of 10 is the probability that it's 2 given that it's even. So in each of these, you just think, okay, so I know that it's this thing um, given that it's whatever. Uh, what's the probability that it is the number we're looking for um, or the kind of number we're looking for? All right, I'm just going to erase... All right, so we got a part A and a part B here, and we're going to pick a club then a spade. So club, club, then spade. So it's probability we pick a club then a spade if we first replace the first card. We pick a card, we put it back, and then we pick a, t a second card. Well, the probability that we get a club, then a spade, it's the probability of a club times the probability of a spade. It's the probability of a club. There's 13 out of the 52 that are clubs. Then we put that card back, so now there's, again, 52 cards in the deck, because we put this first card back. So there is 13 out of 52 probability that uh, this one will have, um, or that this second card will be a spade. Um, so, let's see, 13, let's see, 13 out of 52, that'll be 1 fourth times 1 fourth. So 1 16th of the time uh, that'll happen when we replace it. When we don't replace it, though, Okay, the first card we pick is going to be a club, and the probability is 13 out of 52, but we keep that card. We don't put it back. So how does that affect our probability of getting a spade? Well, we didn't mess with the spades at all. We took a club, so there's still 13 spades, but there's 51 cards now instead of 52. So we have 1 fourth times 13 out of 51, and that will come out to be 13 out of 204.
let's do another one. Just like that. 29. We're going to replace, and then we're not going to replace. And we want to find the probability of a 10, then a 2. 10, then 2. Actually, let's change it a little bit. Um, nope, we don't have an example that I'm looking for. So let's just say 10, then 2. Um, what's the probability that we get a 10? Uh, well, there's four 10s out of the 52 cards. So then we're going to put this card back, which means um, there's a full deck. When we pick for the 2, there's a 4 out of 52 chance that we'll get a 2. So that's 1 out of 13 times 1 out of 13. That's going to be 1 out of 169. When you multiply 13 times 13. Okay, now we want to know the probability of a 10, then a 2, when we don't replace the first card. So the probability that we'll get a 10 is 4 out of 52. Now, with the second card, the probability of it being a 2, well, there's still four 2s. But since we didn't put this card back, there's 51 cards to choose from. So there's a 4 out of 51 chance. So 1 out of 13 times 4 out of 51. It's going to be 4 out of 663. All right. I'm going to make one up here, because I, I think this is important. So. Um, Let's see. Actually, you know what? 31 is what I was looking for. So we want the probability of getting a spade. Then we want to get a club. Then we want to get spade again. Okay. So part A, if we do replace probability of getting a spade is 13 out of 52. Probability of getting a club is also 13 out of 52. Probability of getting a spade, these are replacing, right? We put this card back, so we still have the a full deck of cards when we're considering the second event. We put that card back, we have again a full deck of cards, so this is 13 out of 52. And so that's 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth, which is 1 out of 64. But part B, what if we don't replace the cards? Spade, then club, then spade. Well, the first card is going to be a spade. The deck is full, so that's normal. Next, we're going to pick a club. We don't put this card back, so there's one less card to choose from. There's still 13 clubs, but there's 51 cards to choose from. Now, when we get to the second spade, we see the trend coming here. We don't put the card back, so there's one less card. We don't put the card back, so there's one less card. So there's 50 cards here. But keep in mind also, we've already picked up a spade, so there's one less spade to pick from. Okay? So that's the, the little trick to keep an eye out for. So we have 1 fourth times 13 out of 52 times, let's see. comes out to be um, oh, this should have been a one here um, and six and four share some factors will be two this will be three three and fifty one share factors this will be um, ten, seventeen. So this will be 13 out of 850. OK. And now we'll do number 37. OK. So uh, this, this woman is trying to catch the bus, or girl or young person is trying to catch the bus and the bus uh, often comes early um, and she'll miss it if it's early um, 
So what's the probability that the bus will come early at least once during a five-day school week? Now, if we go head-on with this problem, um, I want you to notice how difficult, or not difficult, but uh, taxing a problem it is. Okay, so let's say there's uh, five days in this week. We want to know the probability that it's going to come late at least once. Okay, so that means we need to know the probability that it is late once, twice, three times, four times, or five times. Okay, now in order to do that, um, let's look at the probability that it's late once. It could be late Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, those are five different scenarios, so we're going to have to do the probability that it's late here, that it's, we'll say, punctual here, 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 and here. Okay, so we'll find the probability of that. Then we have to find the probability that it's late on Tuesday. Then the probability that it's late on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so that's, all that is just to find the probability that it's late once in the week. Then we have to go on to twice. So we'll go with it's late Monday, Tuesday, and punctual Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then we'll change it up. <coughs> We'll let it be punctual on Tuesday, but late Monday and Wednesday, and okay, so that when we make all those combinations uh, of it being late on two days, then we go to three days, so we do that, it's late those three days, or maybe we'll do these three days, you see, we'll have to do one day, two days, three days, four days, and five days, and that's just crazy, that's, that's a lot. Let's think about it in a backdoor kind of a way, let's take a non-conventional approach here. Either it's going to be late, so either it's late at least, at least once. What's the other possibility? What's the complement of this scenario? Um, and the complement means either this is going to happen or the complement is going to happen and nothing else could possibly happen. So either it's late at least once, or it's never late. Right? Either it's going to be late at least once, or it's going to be late zero times. It's going to be late one, two, three, four, or five times, or the only, only other option is that it's never late. Okay? So the probability that it's late at least once plus the probability that it's never late, that's everything. There's nothing else that could possibly happen, and when you have everything that could possibly happen, that is 100%, right, or 1. Um, all the probability, if they're in decimals, will add up to 1. If they're in percents, they'll add up to 100%, but that's it. That's everything. So why don't we, instead of solving for this in the, that really long way that we just looked at, let's subtract the probability that it's never late, from both sides. Okay, So the probability that it's late at least once uh, is equal to 1 minus the probability that it's never late. The probability that it's never late, well that means it's on time every day. It's punctual every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's on time. What's the probability that it'll be on time? The probability that it will be late is 28%, so the probability that it will be on time is 0.72%, or not 0.72%, but 0.72. Okay. So 72% of the time it will be on time. So 72% of 72% of 72% of 72% of 72% of the time it'll be, uh, it'll be on time every day of the week. Okay. So what is that? Let's just pull up the calculator. We'll do 0.72. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can change this to a different view. And we'll do 0.72. Uh, this guy here means a number raised to another number. We'll raise it to the fifth because we're going to multiply by itself five times. So let's go 0.193. So that would be the probability that it is never late. So 1 minus the probability that it is never late will
will be the probability that it is least late at least once. So 1 minus 0 0.193 is 0 0.807. That is the probability that it will be late at least once <coughs> in the following week. There's a pretty good chance. If it's late 28% of the time, um, then there's a pretty good chance it's going to be late at least once during the week. All right, last one here. It's one of those tree diagram ones, which I like. So a tennis player uh, wins a match 55% of the time when, the, when she serves first, and 47% of the time when her opponent serves first. So the player who serves first is determined by a coin toss. Uh, what's the probability that the player wins the given match? Right. So if this player is standing and, and, there and, and serving first, she's holding the ball and she's serving first in this match, she knows she wins 55% of the time when she's serving first. <coughs> um, when she doesn't serve first, she can still win, of course, but she only wins 47% of the time that way. So she she would want to win this coin toss, right? So that's the whole deal. We gotta um, we gotta draw a tree diagram here, right? So first, there's a coin toss. What what can happen? She could win the coin toss or lose the coin toss. Actually, I think these should go at the ends. She could win or she could lose the coin toss. Um, what's the probability she wins a coin toss? So it's just 0.5, and the probability that she loses is 0.5. That's why we, we, we toss coins, because they're fair. They're supposed to be. 50-50. So if she wins the coin toss, what's the probability she wins the match? Wins the match. If she wins the coin toss, it means she serves first, which means she has a 55% chance, or 0.55 chance, of winning the match. Um... Now, we're not really interested in this, but she could lose the match, too. And that has a 0.45 probability. Okay, now let's say that she loses the coin toss. What's the probability that she will win the match? Uh, well, it says in the book we have a 0.47 chance that she'll win, given that she's already lost the coin toss. Okay, what, okay she, she could lose the match, too, and that would be a 0.53% or 0.53 chance that she'll lose. Okay, so what's the probability that she'll win? She could win um, if she takes this route. She wins the coin toss, then wins the match. Or she could win if she loses the coin toss, then wins the match anyway. Okay, so we've got whatever this probability is, uh, in addition to whatever this probability is, um, so this guy here plus this one here will give us what we want. So what's the probability that she'll win the match, given that she has won the coin toss? Um, or what's the probability she will win the coin toss and she will win the match? Half the time she wins the coin toss, and uh, 0.55 of that time she wins the match afterwards. So 0.5 times 0.55, that's the probability that she wins the the coin toss, and she wins the match. Plus, well, half the time, again, she loses the coin toss, and then at 0.47 of that half of the time, she goes on to win as well. So, 0.5 times 0.55 is 0.275. So, 0.275 and then 0 0.5 times 0 0.47 0.235 so plus 0 0.275 0 0.51 she has a 51% chance of winning the match whether she wins the coin toss or loses the coin toss, she's got a 51% chance of winning the match. Okay, and we did that by saying half the time she wins the coin toss and then wins the match, and half the time she loses the coin match uh, or the coin toss, and then 0.47 of that time she goes on to win afterwards. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. 
um, and let me know if you have any questions.